Do you know about the Association of Indian Management Schools? It's a 34-year-old networking body of B schools in India, having a membership of about 600 top management institutions. AIMS focuses on professionalization of management education, protects interests of B schools, represents management institutions at national and international forums, financially supports members in academic events, funds research projects on management, disseminates management related knowledge through its annual management education convention, conferences, seminars, round tables and workshops. organizes free weekly webinars on knowledge sharing and inspiring young leaders sessions for management faculty and students supports b schools in admissions through atma aims test for management admissions visit https atmaaims.com for more details publishes a biannual aims journal of management visit https aimsjournal.com for more details circulates a quarterly e-newsletter on aims activities conducts workshops on case writing encourages aims members to be part of decision making processes as members of chapter management committees and the executive board encourages students participation in free weekly quiz competitions by providing support to interested institutions facilitates networking and interaction among b schools Why would you like to remain a non-member of AIMS? Pay a very low one-time membership fee and enjoy many lifetime benefits. Visit httpsaims.org.in for more. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the uh, deliberations on sports marketing, key issues, opportunities, and challenges. Today we have. Uh, I am Dr. Farooqi AS, working as a associate professor in Sri Balaji University, Pune. uh i am had got the privilege to introduce our esteemed speaker uh that is our dr subhashish sen dr subhashish sen is a qualified professor he is an mba and mphil a phd in marketing and a researcher with around 25 years of work experience dr subhashish sen has experience both in academics and the corporate sector the areas of his expertise include marketing research sports management rural marketing services marketing sales and distribution management business analytics and digital marketing dr subhashish sen has published research papers in scopus and abdc index international journals and participated as track chairperson and a paper presenter in reputed international conferences hosted by various eminent organizations like iim bangalore indian institute of science bangalore Indian School of Business Hyderabad and Rosen College of Hospitality that is in Orlando USA he is presently guiding mba students and phd scholars in research papers and thesis writing and is engaged in full time teaching at as a professor in sri balaji university pune uh, dear audience before starting the session i would like to give you some instructions uh participants will not be able to unmute themselves if they have any questions they can put them in the zoom chat box and will be taken in the question and answer session feedback and attendance link will be shared in the question and answer session and is available only for 15 minutes so i would request you to fill up the feedback session so as to enable us to give you certificates certificates will be issued to only those who submit the feedback form promptly i now hand over the session to dr subhashish sen to enlighten us on the topic of uh, sports management key opportunities and challenges thank you so much thank you farooq sir uh, at the outset i would like to thank uh, sri balaji university and also uh, aims uh, all india management schools for giving us this opportunity to present uh, a very new topic emerging topic which is sports marketing key issues opportunities and challenges i am just sharing my screen before i start good afternoon everyone and there are some people who might be joining from outside india so good morning and good evening to them also uh, 
Today, our session is on sports marketing key issues, opportunities, and challenges. See, I believe uh, many of us here who are attending this session uh, might be directly or indirectly uh, associated with sports. They might be watching sports in some channels, in some through social media. So, uh, taking that thing into consideration, and as well as uh, considering that we are addressing a pool of faculty members and uh, academicians and corporate people. Um, so I have uh, developed this uh, session, and I have uh, also um, experienced uh, the, there are various issues during the last decade on sports marketing, which is happening. So I'll share my experiences with you on this uh, 40 minute session. And uh, after 40 minutes, if you have any question, you can ask me uh, through live chat. So uh, initi uh, initially, we would like to start with uh, the with the evolution and history of sports. So it is a uh, evolution and definition of sports. Basically, see, in sports, uh, if you see in uh, uh, in, a, in a very lighter sense that we talk about competition, we talk about entertainment, uh, we are talking about socialization. So whenever we are talking about all these uh, key issues, uh, sports come into aspect. Okay, and that's why uh, we are uh, discussing this. And at the same time, we would also like to understand that. Uh, sports as a professional career. Okay, so how we can able to uh, bring out sports marketing as a professional career for the students and the faculty members who would be investing their time. Okay, so if you see the definition of sports, it talks about, uh, by Oxford, it talks about physical exertion skill which individual or team competes against each other for entertainment. Whereas when you, when you talk about the definition of sports in, in, uh, in Cambridge Dictionary, we talk about a game, competition, or activity, which will uh, which will lead to enjoyment. At the same time, it will also fetch a job. Okay. And when we talk about sports marketing, we are trying to bridge the demand between the supply okay, and and uh, the consumers looking for the various types of products which are uh, which we are talking about sports apparel uh, sports uh, footwear then uh, there, the, there are athletes who are looking for different types of uh, footwear different type of equipment sport equipments so all these things how we can able to meet that uh, demand supply gap so this is basically uh, all about sports marketing how we can able to meet up the demand supply gap of different equipments, events, uh, uh, clothing, sports goods, equipments. So all these things, when we are organizing an event, sporting event, we would also like to have spectators, viewers. So how to increase the viewership? How to increase the spectator? How to uh, think about the fan engagement? How, the, uh, how many people are going to visit the stadium? So there are many sporting events which are happening all across the world. Which are some some are successfully done and some 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 of the events are not uh, done successfully and they are closing down also. In some of the cases in India, Tata Open in Pune. I am staying in Pune where we have seen that I am also an uh, accomplished lawn tennis player. So where I have seen that Tata Open is shifted to some other countries because of lack of uh, infrastructure as well as the uh, money uh, which is being uh, given for that uh, competition or the contest. So uh, this this is where we need to think about what needs to be done to improve the sports infrastructure in India. At the same time, how we can compete against the best in the world. So if we see the Olympic medal tally, if we see the Asian, Asian Games, so everywhere we can see that there is a growth, there is a growing trend. Okay, although we are investing a lot of money in sports, but whether it is growing as per the expectation, that is that is where the challenge lies. So I am going to talk about uh, these uh, challenges, uh, opportunities as well as the key issues through some case studies in the coming slides. Okay, so uh, approaches, when we are talking about the approach of approaches to sports marketing, there are two types of approach. See, one, we are talking about uh, marketing of sports goods and the, for the athletes, okay, as well as uh, sporting events, okay, as well as uh, the footwear, everything, all the related, related things related to sports. At the same time, we are also, when we are talking about the second approach, this is the first approach, when we are talking about the second approach, we are talking about products which are not related to sports, okay? That means non-related items to sports, like FMCG products. It can be a functional drink, Holdix also. It can be a drink like Red Bull also, which is not directly related to sports, but it is having some significance, can contribute in the overall holistic uh, contribution for sports marketing. 
so the sports market uh, when we are talking about the sports marketing primarily there are two types of sports marketing market which which is talking about mass participation sport that is marathon we which we are talking about kabaddi we, we are talking about um, then um, uh, then uh, there are there are many events where a group a group of people that the, the team of people participate so these kind of sports are called mass particip- uh, mass participation sports okay and at the same time when we are talking about olympics uh, like athletics then when we are talking about cycling when we are talking about football cricket it is, this is talking about elite sports so there are primarily there are two types of uh, sports market that we can able to see uh, globally okay uh, even uh, tug of war when we, what we do very amateur sports which can also be considered as a mass participation sports event okay and when we are talking about the consumer supply relationship uh, when we are talking about the consumer supply relationship in sports the consumers are of three types spectators uh, participants corporate or business that means the sponsor they are also going to so i am also going to talk about sponsorship uh, later on in my session so where uh, this, this is basically some of the research gaps which i am going to discuss so there are primarily three types of consumers spectators participants and corporate or business who are investing in sports for certain amount of value which we would like to generate through investing in sports products uh, events uh, sport, sporting goods personal training sports info now sports information has become a very important aspect right now because lot of conversation is going on lot of discussion is going on in the social media so through uh, consumers of sports or through fans through spectators through uh, social media users we can able to uh, get several insights which can help us to understand how to design new products how to design new services in sports at the same time sports journalism has also become very popular in uh, today's uh, sports marketing like sports journalism sports tourism so these are other new new products which are evolving out of uh, the the sports fraternity who are looking for sports not only as a uh, kind of competition they are also going to visit different places so that they can enjoy the play, uh, destination at the same time uh, can enjoy uh, can participate and engage in different sporting activities the last but not the least is producer the intermediaries now they are the most important uh channel which come who are manufacturing the sporting goods okay as well as helping us to uh, organize the sporting events like agents ticketing agents media sponsors equip, equip equipment manufacturers sanctioning bodies ownership so they are also equally responsible for you know uh, for uh, you know creating the sporting uh, events as well as uh, bringing the sports into limelight so let's discuss about the case studies uh, which you would like to share with you where through with through these case studies you will come to know about the various key issues challenges and opportunities that are prevailing in the area of sports market i'll go to the next slide okay so uh, if you can see the data united states has uh, you know in terms of sports uh, uh, value generation united states is leading the entire uh, journey of sports marketing where the if it is the data of 2018 and further it has improved further also but india is lacking in this particular area so if you see 152 billion us dollar uh, already spent already the value of uh, united states uh, sports market and whereas india is lagging behind in 12.9 billion us dollar so we have to do a lot so there are a lot of opportunities for the people who are or the students who are studying sports marketing in in in, in different companies who would like to penetrate the indian market whereas the indian market is huge okay and uh, so lot of investment as well as value should, uh, should be generated in this particular market of sports apparel footwear uh, and uh, uh, so that's why uh, we are studying this sports marketing because we would like to uh, compete against the best in the world at the same time we are also uh, uh, going to ensure that the interest for sports and the consumption of sports increases 
Now, you coming back to the Indian market totally, if you see the Indian market is growing, it is not that it is, uh, it, is, uh, it is not growing, but it is not growing as per the expectations that we want. So if you see the 2025 uh, predicted data, 220 uh, billion Indian rupees are going to spend on footwear and 161.25 um, uh, rupees should be spent, 2.161.25 uh, billion rupees will be spent on apparel. Okay. So this is a huge uh, 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 amount. Okay, so this is uh, the value of sports is increasing. So value of sports, goods uh, as well as apparel, the gears. So gears are a little less, uh, although, but it is increasing. Uh, year on year, if you see year, year on year growth from 2015 to 2025, the year on year growth is quite impressive. Now we come back, come to the case studies. Now, if you see a small country like Qatar, who has in the, whose, whose uh, population is only 2.7 million people, they have hosted this uh, FIFA World Cup 2022. And, and they have defeated countries like Australia, Japan, South Korea, and United States. So it's quite a, quite a, uh, a remarkable uh, achievement by a country like Qatar. So Qatar is considered as uh, Forbes uh, magazine as the richest country in the world for having the highest GDP per capita on the planet. Now, what, how it is possible? So how they have made, made it possible? Now, although they are, they are, very, they are very, very rich people, but at the same time, there are some challenges also. Like they are having challenges, uh, like economic challenges, social challenges, human challenges, environmental uh, challenges. So because they are they are in the non manufacturing of non renewable resources, so oil. So they are rich in oil. So that's the reason uh, we need to think about all these aspects, and that's why they have focused on the 17 goals given by UN Sustainable Development Goals, while they have thought about. No, hosting the World Cup 2022. And they are also having a vision, to th to 2030 vision. They are following that vision so that they can overcome their drawbacks and challenges that they are facing. And they are, they are converting their uh, weaknesses and threats into opportunities as well as strengths. So let us see what they have done. So they have, these are the 17 goals. Here I am going to show you one video which will help you to understand how these 17 goals can be uh, can be thought about while we are uh, doing sports marketing okay so i'll just going to share the video for uh, just a moment through a ball in the community you have children and you have youth gravitating towards you and then it's how you capture that moment to then use that as an opportunity to talk about crucial issues in education, in health, in livelihood, things that are really going to impact lives. We have global evidence and research to show that physical education and sports in schools have definitely a positive impact on attendance as well as school achievement. Non-communicable diseases represent the major burden and the major cause of mortality in the world. Sport and physical activity is essential to be healthy. When people see people with disability competing and participating in sport, they're often really surprised how able people with disabilities can be. When these children come on the sports field, it creates acceptance of people with disabilities and their families. The greatest challenges for women in developing countries are violence against women, the lack of educational opportunities, often associated with early marriage, and their ability to participate in paid work. We come from families where it is a taboo to talk about many issues which are part of growing up. So for girls to be able to talk about issues which matter to them, life skill and sport surely works for young girls. We learn from sport. Uh, we learn issues around racism, discrimination, homophobia, inequality, all through participating in sport. The reason that sport has a major contribution to make is through its ability to engage. If you don't have engagement, you don't have connection, and you can't affect social change. Are we in the same line? So, uh, so that means uh, these 17, if you see, go through this uh, 17 goals of uh, United Nations, uh, 
they have tried to connect uh, the good health and well-being. Here, there is a paper which has been written recently by me and uh, Dr. Sweta Banerjee, 22. We have published in uh, uh, Xavier Institute of Social Service, Jharkhand uh, Journal of Development and Management Studies, where uh, we are talking about the different types of well-being, social well-being, physical well-being, uh, psychological well-being, and how it leads to uh, improvement of quality of life. So this is basically what uh, Qatar uh, people, they started thinking about when they have uh, you know, uh, thought about hosting World Cup for improvement at the best level so that we can able to uh, groom the talent and we can able to successfully implement uh, things uh, with technological help, with technological support and uh, make things happen. So if the economy is solid, if the economy is developed, uh, the sports is uh, not a very difficult thing to do. And uh, that's why uh, the importance, significance of sports are uh, becoming so important for the economic development of a nation. So let, let's proceed further to the uh, next case study. Uh, now, this, this, these are some of the uh, things they have focused, uh, diamond of the desert, uh, the, that is Qatar. So human development, social development, major challenges, uh, which has been discussed here, economic development and environmental development. So we'll proceed to the next case study now. This case study is talking about 2012 London Olympics. Okay. Now this, uh, in 2012 London Olympics, they have talked about innovation. Okay. How we can able to uh, diffuse innovation uh, so that we can able to create a, a convenience to the people to the athletes, to the spectators, uh, who are viewers who are watching this particular sport, and also share information, share uh, discussion among themselves, uh, create a buzz among themselves, uh, create a buzz about a particular event, and also create a kind of a uh, partnership between the athlete and the spectators, and through social media. So how social media? So they started thought thinking about how we, they can come up with new approaches. Now this uh, involvement, engagement of social media happened uh, quite uh, successfully. And now everywhere if you see, social media plays a very important role in uh, promoting and marketing of different events. So what happened? Uh, Gaskin considered uh, development and implementation of unique and novel marketing approaches, entering new markets, connecting with new channels, and using new com communication and promotional tools even pricing techniques as part of the marketing innovation process. So this is this is one of the challenges now. We also have to thought think about that how we can come up with different pricing techniques uh, by which we can able to encourage people to participate in sports. So because that is a big challenge right now. Attend how to and uh, how to. So I am having a paper on that uh, on attendance behavior. Uh, I'll, I'll just uh, showcase it in the coming slides. So there. Also, we need to think about a little bit uh, so that we can able to uh, get the revenue as per the expectations from the various events that we are organizing in India and abroad. The creation of ways that enable prosumers, that means uh, consumers are no more only consumers, they, are, they have become prosumers. They are not only sharing information, they are also uh, producing information, they are creating information, so they are creating content so that it can bring more people uh, in the same ground or more people in, 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 in the similar interest. Okay, the creation of online conversations. So all these things are happening through social media. And that is why uh, we need to think about innovation in sports as given by Rogers in diffusion of innovations. So this is the second case study, which is talking about London Olympics and how they have organized this entire event successfully. The third case study, uh, if you see, Talking about Qatar, now I'm going to talk about North Korea, where things are very difficult to, to be implemented because they are anti-capitalist country. They don't want other people to invest in their country. In such a scenario, how they have done post sponsorship although they have understood the importance of sport, okay, even their financial resources, they are, they are lacking in financial resources, but they have tracked that during the World Cup in England 1966, North Korea has beaten Italy by 1-0. So that means it's a it's a great achievement. Okay, it's a great achievement in quarterfinals. So, so they started thinking about that when somebody is having the talent, let the talent grow. Let uh, the people invest on that particular talent so that the 
the nation can grow nation can bring more medals nation can uh, bring more glory to the sports uh, to the sports fraternity and finally uh, people are going to get benefited out of it so if a, in a, if, a, if it is possible in a country like north korea where uh, kim jong un is the president so why not in india my question so a lot of sponsorship is happening private sponsors are there a lot, uh, even the government is also you know ensuring that uh, the sports can be treated as a, a very valuable uh, source of income uh, by 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 grooming the talented uh, athletes so this is where we need to think about seriously where we can uh, you know uh, sponsor those people talented people who can bring medals for india because if you see the medal tally of india india has won 35 medals till now in olympics Asian Games, India is improving year year on year. In the last year, uh, in the last uh, Asian Games, they have won seventy around seventy medals. So this year, we are expecting more medals to come. But we are improving. But we have to think seriously about sports marketing right now, so that uh, our uh, our yeah, yeah, our future generation can get benefited out of it, and lot of jobs can be created. Okay, there are a lot of companies who are ready to invest in sports. and they there are a lot of companies who are ready to take uh, students uh, who, who are interested in sports market so uh, let us proceed further uh, this is all about uh, north korea and they, how they have converted their uh, you know people are very you know skeptical in investing in north korea but uh, their 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 promotion their their way of their approach towards sports uh, have really created a uh, great uh, source of income as well as uh, you know encourage sponsors to invest like uh, even a hong kong based company like arc has invested in uh, sports apparel uh, for north korea sports team and achieved massive brand recognition when the north korean soccer team qualified for the 2010 world cup wearing arc embezzlement so let us proceed further to understand the different uh, issues now these are the three case studies which i would like to showcase so that uh, we can able to understand the key issues uh, challenges and opportunities which are prevailing right now in sports marketing and also creating opportunities for people who would like to invest and also make a career in sports now when i am talking about research gaps uh, now here what what we see in the research gaps uh, there is another 10 minutes i am going to quickly go through this so there are many research gaps right now prevailing in sports marketing okay so the first one is parsimonious measuring tool of motives to explain sports event uh, uh, participation behavior okay now here there is a scale which has already been developed by funk et al 2009 now he he has talked about speed speed means socialization performance excitement esteem and diversion so sports marketing can help us to socialize what any kind of sporting event can help us to perform it can lead to excitement it will also lead to esteem that means if i get a ticket for world cup if i get a ticket to wimbledon definitely i i might uh, my self esteem is going to grow and finally diversion from our mundane day to day, -to -day mundane task so we we are always like to go and uh, go and visit some places where we can spend some time quality time with our family and also enjoy in enter uh, and it, it it is a kind of a uh, entertainment for us sports related branded entertainment now here i am going to show you one video and this video is basically little soundless video there is not much sound only uh, act action is there so please observe this for 2 minutes see Okay. 
cambiar una nueva así o cambiar el color cada partido? No, hay mucho nivel. ¿Cómo cambiar? So all football lovers, I hope you have enjoyed the video and uh, it is all about Ronaldo, you know, uh, a Brazilian soccer player who is uh, showing his charismatic skills. So why I have shown you this video? Because I wanted to make you understand about sports related brand entertainment. Now the content has to have an association. See, I, I am having a brand. So how I am going to showcase that brand? Here the brand is Nike. So how Ronaldinho has showcased this brand Nike through his skills. So this is called brand related content. Okay, sports related, brand related content. So that means uh, you have to develop that kind of content so that it is going to be appreciated by the people who are in the area of sports at the same time, create interest for people who are not related to sports. Red, red branded, uh, Red Bull branded sports entertainment was also having su such kind of action where they have involved the sporting uh, sporting fraternity, the, the sporting, the people uh, who are doing well in the area of sports, the athletes, and they have tied up their brand with them and thereby they have showcased their, their brand uh, using their skills. Uh, similarly, if you see this, uh, the study given by Vail and Fernandez, so why I'm showing you all these things today? Because there, these are the studies where we need to do, we need to focus upon so that we can able to uh, uh, take the sports fraternity and we can able to improve the, uh, the sports marketing scenario at present in our country. So stated the st study of cognitive and effective competence, which talks about engagement with football clubs on social media. Okay. So the, he has also spoken about Vail and Fernandez. He has also talked, uh, spoken about in his study of social media engagement. So that means there is a gap right now, which has to be studied on social media engagement for fan loyalty and what are the uh, mo uh, moderating effect of fan individual variables on the relationship between motivation and online engagement. So is there any moderating effect between uh, motivation and online engagement, which is happening uh, uh, through sports uh, and, uh, and how social media engagement is, uh, is, is, is getting into this particular area of sports so that uh, people can be get benefited out of it. And finally, uh, we can uh, we can you know, enjoy the events, we can entertain and we can have fun. And at the same time, uh, revenue gets generated out of it. So again, uh, if you talk about the fan engagement uh, here again, uh, Narayan uh, Etel uh, to 2022, he has talked about now many reels are happening, reels and stories you must have seen in the Bollywood. And even if you see the, that some of the people who are having some talent, they are having their own reels and stories. Okay. Mm -hmm. And also they are paying for it. It's a sponsored content. So this sponsored content, what is the impact of sponsored content 
on fan engagement. So that is also one area where you need to think about as research gap in sports marketing. This is the this is the, uh, the other uh, set of gaps which uh, which I would like to highlight. So the uh, the second set of gaps which has come up with right now is esports. Now a lot of investment, even uh, uh, Indian team is also being you know uh, sponsored by a by an esports company. Okay, so this uh, this is basically you need to Indian cricket team which which, uh, which are going for the World Cup. So esports investment in esports has become a very important aspect, especially. For sponsors, okay. The key feature of esports is that uh, they involve physical activities that players develop together with non-human actions and things. And also, due to this COVID situation, this particular market has grown up, okay. Because earlier we used to go for physical sports. Now, what is happening? How is the people are going to think? How the people are going to act? Okay, which can be done uh, using technology. And uh, through electronic support, we can able to achieve. And so, what is the future of esports? And what is what are the areas esports? And what is the opportunities for sponsors who would like to promote esports? So, these are some of the areas which we need to deal with in future in our future studies. Sponsorship has been defined as financial investment in a person on an activity or an, so. It is in one of my studies I uh, have mentioned in uh, in Indian Journal of Marketing that. The sponsored team or event and the sponsor have a symbiotic relationship in which there is a transference of value towards the sponsor entity. That means there is an exchange of value between the sponsor and the sponsee or the person who is getting the money from the sponsor. So there has to be an exchange of value. You cannot have a kind of a relationship where uh, only the money is getting invested and there is no relationship between the sponsor and the uh, sports team where the investment has happened or the individual. So there has to be a proper kind of like when uh, David Beckham joined Manchester United, there's a, there was a proper kind of relationship or proper, uh, you know, you can say that uh, connectivity between these two uh, entities, uh, the Manchester United and David Beckham. And thereby the, the value of the club also went up and also the value of the player also went up. So both the people are going to get benefited out of this sponsorship. So this is where uh, we need to think about little bit because uh, in Indian context, if you see talk about sponsorship, it's a it's a very challenging task. It's a very challenging task. Not on not only in Indian context, if you see the emerging markets, getting funding for any game is a very challenging task. So how to go about? So that has to be thought about. What are the factors which are influencing sponsorship? Uh, there are many studies which has been done, but the studies are only you know right now we have understood the importance of AI. Earlier, AI is a very primitive concept, but uh, the, the, the understanding of AI has just come up. Similarly, we need to think about that sponsorship aspect, how we can able to uh, you know, deal with this sponsor so that there is a win-win situation between the, uh, between the sponsor and the sponsor, the, between the sports team and the individuals and the companies and the business people who are investing in sports. Uh, different e-sports e competitions are also there. Uh, we need to uh, explore those. And what is the consumer motivation? What is the engagement aspect on in e-sports? So although the data is secondarily available, but uh, in secondary data, everything is not there. So we need to do some primary research, uh, finding out whether people are interested, people, people are get, getting engaged uh, through different e-sports. And also the monitoring the competition, whether there is any, uh, the competition is, there is a healthy competition, which is happening in the area of esports. Now, if you see the sponsorship into aspect, there are, see, there are many uh, research papers which have been written. And primarily, I have taken the, uh, uh, taken the, you know, uh, various uh, research work from Sports Marketing Quarterly. There is a journal called Sports Marketing Quarterly where a lot of uh, research happens on sports marketing. Uh, primarily, I have taken the studies from there. There also I have seen that one for one particular jersey, jersey sponsorship, there are so many companies who are competing. Okay, uh, so we need to think about that. So how we can able to uh, gel the two, two, two entities, how they can able to associate with each other, having similar kind of attributes, having similar kind of characteristics and thinking process. And thereby things can happen uh, in, a, in a positive manner. Otherwise, what will happen for just for the sake of investment, I am investing for a team uh, without having any kind of uh, relationship, without having any kind of uh, kind of a, uh, you know, uh, association uh, or uh, kind of characteristics uh, similar to each other. And uh, thereby the company is not going to 
uh, earn out of it and with and the and the sponsorship bonding uh, or sponsorship strategy uh, there is a strategic failure in sponsorship so that we need to think about these are some of the areas uh, research gap i thought i should share with you uh, to end my session i have just uh, the uh, just want to go to the next slide so i believe i have kept my time on uh, kept the time on mind and finish the session uh, just i want to share the yeah this is my references can you all see the references uh, professor uh, professor yes, joshi sir. yeah yeah so yes yes these I are the references i have given uh, for your reference uh, mm -hmm. as a as a faculty of post marketing or future faculty of post marketing so these references are really going to help you in understanding what, what is my deliverables today and uh, if uh, if uh, aims uh, they allow us they, i can share this ppt with you also and finally last but not the least uh, marketing is a race without a finishing line as stated by philip kotler okay with this i would like to end my today's session thank you all for your patient listening thank you yeah thank you dr subhashti sen sir for a enlightened talk on this in, uh, unique topic which is uh, not usually touched upon uh, meanwhile i would request participants to please post their questions in the chat box sir one of our, one of our colleague um, professor dr nilesh kharche wants to ask you that how can sports marketing be considered as a professional career sir as That's i have told you there is a huge opportunity right now uh, for the people who are investing in sports especially in sports analytics uh, sports goods industry because there are uh, many different brands available right now different companies are there n number of companies are the adidas nike puma uh, uh, decathlon so, so many companies are there i can I, i to just to name a few so there is a huge opportunity right now people who would like to become a sports marketer and uh, also there are jobs available only thing is that you require the qualities okay you require the qualities and the skills uh, to become a sports marketer so that is what uh, this subject will help us to understand and will teach you in future okay thank this, you sir uh, yeah yeah thank you so much sir for um, taking up this question uh, sir one one question has come is uh, uh, subhashi sir what is what should be as per your de deliberations the future of sports and sports marketing in india the uh, future is quite good if we are investing in sports basically in sports infrastructure uh and because if you see the olympic medals and the asian 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 medals asian games medals it is growing okay the trend is going it is it is, a, it is going in a positive direction although oh, we 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 have to invest like this time or uh, the women's cricket has come up in asian games you can see so we have to compete in those sports which are which we are good at which north korean people has done so we have to compete on we, we cannot be good in football okay but we have to improve upon it's not that we should we should leave, leave it give it up but we have to improve we have to bring foreign coaches we have to invest in sports we have to also invest in people in athletes who are playing that sports so that that should be a sponsorship proper sponsorship uh, sponsor sponsor relationship which i have already stated in my challenges and so i think there are some questions which has come sir faruqi sir in the chat box there are some questions yeah sir there is a question that cricket versus the other sports with respect to marketing in india uh, so what is your thought sometimes you know it is it is yeah, that, that is that is what i wanted to i think surya kala pala uh, professor yeah, surya, surya kala pala wants to know uh, because uh, sometimes wants, cricket wants, is uh, more glorified yeah. than other yeah, sports yeah. Uh, that is where the problem lies see uh, we can be good in kabaddi also so we need to make those sports uh, bring those sports in the limelight hockey we are good in hockey we have to bring those sports into limelight okay now cricket being a very popular sports we are good in uh, cricket but there are other sports also like lawn tennis i i am a lawn tennis player so i play regularly lawn tennis so what i felt is that uh, lawn tennis being a very uh, and indians are doing well see, if you see bopanna he has uh, he, he has in the us open he played the finals doubles finals and also uh, we are having players like leander pace who have already done well uh, bhupati okay uh, but uh, somewhere i think they have struggled a lot they have struggled a lot so if we can able to get a proper sponsorship if we can uh, able to 
uh, grab them young and uh, and groom them at the at the grassroots level definitely sports will improve in india and we can have a huge market huge potential market uh, which is uh, which is growing right now but we require more and more people in this particular sector and many people are thinking sports as a niche area but i think that sports would be the future thank you sir uh, we have one more question that uh, by yeah. nr mohan prakash what that what do, role uh, an academician uh, needs to play to get the policy makers uh, support to engage uh, sport that in turn uh, help to develop sports market so yeah i think i have already makers, support uh, and sports yeah i got the question uh, now uh, see i have already enlightened that yeah. uh, uh, that information I, which has been shared by professor uh, mohan prakash like if you have a case study like north korean people they got the government although this see uh, politically they are very uh, uh, no uh, you can say uh, politically they are uh, they are very difficult nation okay and but politics is not all okay if somebody is good in sports you have to give him the due respect okay now that is what the north korean government has done they have uh, forgotten about politics and they have initiated the sponsorship policy so that that particular uh, uh, athlete can participate in world events so that is what i i would like to touch upon here Polit uh, so sometimes what happens we uh, we say that due to politics uh, due to lack of funding things are not happening because we we also need to ensure that we must get uh, government funding uh, and we need to ensure that and also the government should take initiatives on those areas uh, and i think hello india has uh, has been a remarkable success okay hello india they have invested lot of uh, amount in, uh, amount in hello india and um, uh, uh, sports authority of india they are also investing but uh, i think it has to go deep down in the grassroots level that is where the problem lies otherwise fine sir dr geetanjali bhat has put up a question that how to guide students to make uh, a career in sports marketing yes so you should tell them that there are companies which are coming out you can see lot of company i have already mentioned now some of the names of the companies uh, they, they are, because especially manage, we, we are dealing with management students mba students now there are many companies which are there we need to tap those companies they are looking for people on sports marketing okay but they the students do not have the skill of what has to what we, what is required they they have to be very uh, fit okay they have to be professionally fit they are in in terms of you know uh, what i am talking about the well being physical well being psychological well being social well being all these things are very much required for a student to uh, to become professionally fit for sports as a sports marketer so these things are required along with that you need to require, have have a professional knowledge uh, as well as what is going on in around the world in, in the in the world of sports so those things are also required so we can we will uh, we have to groom them accordingly as per the uh, trends which are happening in sports at the same time i have also mentioned about social media okay how social media engagement is happening we need to know some technological skills sports analytics how image analytics is uh, prevailing in sport okay there are a lot of opportunity even in analytics area also in sports analytics area also people who are investing in sports analytics there are many companies who are investing in sports analytics they are looking for marketing professionals i hope i have able to answer to your question dr nitanjan Yes, sir, uh, Dr. Subhashish Singh. Thank you very much, sir, for uh, a very informative, illustrative uh, deliberation with full of references, case studies, uh, which has uh, put a lot of light on a, a very, very newer area in marketing. So, uh, formally, I would like to thank Dr. Subhashish Singh for taking out his valuable time and uh, being a part of this uh, wonderful session. Uh, I also take this opportunity to thank uh, Mr. Sudhir Sharma, the president of. AIMS, uh, Dr. G K Shirode sir, the regional vice president, West of All India Management uh, Association, all the board members, and uh, the AIMS secretariat, and my special thanks goes to Dr. Sunil Joshi, AIMS, who has been uh, very uh, supportive in arranging this this talk, this lecture. Lastly, and uh, I would like to thank all the participants who took out their well. valuable time 
to join this session and showed their keen interest in uh, not only attending but asking the inquisitive questions also so that this uh, niche area of marketing is uh, brought to light thank you so much one and all